chapter number 3, verse number 1. Habakkuk chapter number 3 and verse number 1. Right after the book of Nahum. Right before the book of Zephaniah. Habakkuk chapter number 3, verse number 1. <clears throat> A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shiganoth. O Lord, I, was, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy works in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Again, verse number two. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy works in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Lord, we can leave here today saying it has truly been good to be in the house of the Lord. But God, we thank you, Lord, now for a time that we can gather around the Word of God. Lord, we pray that you bless the Word of God today. Lord, I pray that the preacher, Lord, the Holy Ghost of God, would move behind this pulpit. Move me aside, Father. May the Spirit of God take over today. Lord, I pray, Father, right now, God, you bless each one that's here. If there's someone here that's lost without you, God, I pray that you touch them, Lord, with conviction. I pray, Father, they'd see the need to come to a Savior before they perish. And die and go to hell without you. Lord, this may be the last opportunity for someone this morning to accept you as Savior. And I pray, God, that they would make that move today. If there's someone here, God, that's backslid, God, called on thee. May this be the day, Father, they determine their heart. Lord, they're going to they're gonna be revived and going to serve you. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you just a little while this morning on our prayer for revival. Let me ask you something. How many of you in here would sacrifice some of your time in prayer for revival? Raise your hand. Now, I'm asking you the question because I've got a challenge to put before you here. Uh, we need to pray for revival. I, I've been looking at things and studying things, and I realize more than ever before, Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church needs revival. We need a stir of God. We need a move of God in our lives and in our church. Amen? Amen. Uh, we said here we probably got 70 people here, so praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad. Thankful for that. Oh, God bless you for coming. I love you. Glad you come this morning to the house of God. But I'll tell you something, friend. Ain't there, I've asked this question over and over to a lot of people, do you need revival? And I've never had no one say, no, I don't need revival. Everyone needs a stir of God. Everyone needs a, a, a move of God in their life. Now, friend, we're going to have to settle down in our minds and in our hearts whether or not we're willing to pay the price for revival. Amen? Amen. And we're going to have to say, well, I want revival, and I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to do what's necessary to have revival. I'm talking about a remove of the of the Spirit of God. I'm not talking about four or five nights of religious services, of, of services where we just come and hear preaching. I'm talking about a move of the Holy Ghost of God. Now, I, I meant to have all what I've got going on here today. I meant to have it on the chart, but I didn't I didn't get everything in time. So so I have got I think enough of you probably raised your hand. I want you to, if you're committed to praying for revival, I want your commitment today, amen, that we pray for revival, amen? amen. Now, I've done this before, and God always honors it, so I've got a, I've got a time sheet here, and it is a 24-hour prayer chain for revival. And what you do, I'm going to put it back there when we leave this morning, and if you're interested in praying for revival, put your name on one of these prayer times. Amen? Now listen, somebody's going to have to say, I'm willing to get up at 2 a.m. and pray for revival. Amen? 
Somebody's going to have to say, I'm willing to get up at 2.30 and pray for revival. If you're serious about the business of God and you're serious about revival, it ain't going to be no problem for you to wake up and pray at that 30-minute hour, pray for revival. If it's just a few minutes, say, oh, Lord, thank you for prayer. God send revival. God will honor your prayer, your heartfelt prayer. God will honor that. So I believe there's probably enough of you raised your hand. If there weren't, somebody might have to make a, a special commitment. But listen, friend, it'll do you and me good. Listen, I'm going to put my name on there. Don't worry about it. The preacher's been praying and he's going to pray. We need revival. Now Habakkuk saw in his day this, uh, this uh, prayer here of his about revival was Shiganoth means that it was set to, to music. And he says in verse number 2, he says again, Oh, Lord, I can imagine Habakkuk calling out to God in prayer. Oh, Lord. And friend, if there's ever been a day when, when we need revival, it is today. You know what to fill this church up and make us have to bring out chairs, amen, on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You know what will do that? Revival. You know what to bring a grove of young folks into the church? Revival, amen. You say, oh, but preacher, we got to have everything in the world to bring kids in. Hey, listen, you bring them in and somebody will take them out. Amen. We need revival. It's worked for years and years, and God hadn't changed, and I believe with all my heart it'll work today. Amen. You, say that, you see, the old-fashioned drawing of the Spirit of God still works today. An old-fashioned move of God still works today. Now, certainly I believe we ought to do things with the young as hey, but You know I believe in that. But I'm telling you, friend, what will do us a world of good at Gables Creek Baptist Church and bring the kids in, bring the teenagers in, is a move of the Spirit of God. That's revival. How do you know that'll work, preacher? I've seen it. I've seen it in my lifetime. I know it'll work. If you want the church filled up, amen, when you want the... the the young people to come in. Amen. If we see revival, God will take care of all of that. You want to see sinners saved to the house of God? Amen. If we have a move of God in our church, in our community, <coughs> if we have true revival, we'll see lost people saved in Grable's Creek Baptist Church. It's been a while now. I'm getting hungry to see someone walk the aisle and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. People are lost all around us. Maybe someone in his church this morning don't know God. Listen, you'll never get to heaven, amen, by sitting in church, amen. You'll get to heaven by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is, is revival worth your time and your prayer? Listen, I'm just putting out there what God gave me. Is revival worth your time or your prayer? Listen, I'm not looking. If, if I thought all, we, all was going to happen, we was going to come in and have uh, some preaching, and, and listen, that, just that is not revival. Revival is when God moves <coughs> upon your heart and upon my heart. It's when the Spirit of the Lord touches us and we are restored back to that which we was in the past. You say, well, preacher, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay, but listen to me, friend. How many of you, and you don't answer this, but how many of you will say, I have been closer to God than I am right now? Oh, my friend, when we ask ourselves that question, and most of the time it's to the negative, I'll tell you, we need revival. I've asked over and over to different folks, do you think we need a, a, a revival? Had nobody say, no, preacher, we're doing just fine. Everybody admit, we need a stir of God. Now let me give you a couple of things and we'll be through. <clears throat> this, uh, he, he, Habakkuk in his prayer, he prayed for revival because he was so desperate. He saw the desperate need of God's people turning to God. I don't know what it's going to take in your life and in my life for us to turn to the Lord. I don't know what it's going to take in our country if we ever turn back to God. America's going to have to have something go on that will direct their attention toward the God of heaven. Amen? It's going to have to direct America's attention from, from, the, from the 
<coughs> the world that we live in is going to have to direct their attention toward the power of God. We have seen national calamity in our world, in our uh, country before. But friend, I, if we don't get right with God, if America don't turn to God, we're going to see disasters that we never dreamed would happen if we don't turn to God, if America don't turn to God. You say, but preacher, we're one little church in one little county on one little road in the mountains of western North Carolina. What can we do? I tell you what we can do. We can... We can do what Habakkuk did and cry out to God for revival. Amen. You say, well, what if it don't get out of the community? Well, glory. Amen. I wish it would. Hallelujah. I wish it'd break out of the church into the community. Amen. And God in heaven, amen, will bless us and help us and get us on the right path. Amen. I'm not trying to ruffle anybody's feathers, but I'm telling you, friend, every church in the, in the county needs revival, amen? And we're not exempt, amen? We need to serve God. And I've been praying, oh, Lord, send revival. God's people in Habakkuk's time had been, had begun uh, uh, forgetful and careless of their devotion to the Lord. Let me ask you something. Does church and God mean all that it, uh, the better than it ever has been to you? Does church and the things of God mean more to you now than it did when you got saved? Does it mean as much to you as when you got saved? Or have we drifted back just a little from that thing of, of uh, the joy of our salvation? See, the devil knows how to lull you and I into a, into a stage of complacency where we'll say, well, everything's going to be like it is. There's nothing I can do about it. But listen, friend, as long as I got breath to breathe, amen, as long as I got lungs to tell it, I'm going to tell you, friend, that we need revival, and I believe God's still doing it. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. God can still do it if we're willing for God to do it in our lives. The children of Israel had almost lost their testimony for the things of God. Now, I don't believe we're there yet as a church. I believe we're, I'll tell you what I think the church is doing. I think the church is doing pretty good. But amen, the more, the better we do, the more we want to do. Amen. The closer we get to God, the closer we want to get to God. And friend, the, the more revival spirit stirs, the more we want it to stir. Amen. That's something you just can't get enough of. That's something I can't get enough of. Do we pray like we used to? Do we read the Bible like we used to? See, revival, now many people have got the thought that revival is a place where <coughs> you have a week of services and lost people come in and get saved. Well, let me tell you something. If that happens, if that's what happens, we know, friend, that God's stirring in revival. But revival is not for lost people to be saved. Revival is for God's people to get right with God. Amen. And I'd love for the process to be that we had, we're in, you know, what, by the time a preacher gets here two Sunday mornings from now, I'd love for the, for the process to be in that we're already stirred for God. Amen. Amen. I want to see that we're already rejoicing in the Lord. And when the preacher comes to preach, amen, we can have good revival services and it'll get out in the community that the Spirit of God is working and the, the power of God is moving and folks will come from all around to see what's happening. And guess what will happen? Lost people will begin to get saved, amen, as a result of God's people amen. being revived. Our need of, of spiritual revival is as great as it was in Habakkuk's time and more. Looking at this verse, as we examine the scripture, we see that Habakkuk said, Oh, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. And I believe that little word O oh, means and stands for, for how, how much and how greatly we desire a move of God, a revival in this church and in his day. Have you ever used that expression with someone? Oh, 
Have you ever went to someone in prayer and say, like, like I'm talking, I'm talking here and I'm talking to Dennis. I said, oh, Dennis, will you pray for me? I could say, Dennis, will you pray for me? And I'm sure he'd say, yeah. But when I put that word oh in front of that means that I've got a deep longing in my heart for somebody to pray for me. Oh, Max, will you pray for revival? Oh, will you pray for revival? Oh, will you pray for revival? A deep, a deep longing in my heart when we put that word oh in front of anything. Oh, oh, how much I love my wife. I love my wife, but oh, how much I love you, sweetheart. Oh, you still make my heart pitter-patter, amen. <laughs> that spark ain't about to go out, amen. Anybody tries to throw water on that, get the bullet. I'll just tell you right quick. Oh, I love my church. Oh, church, I love you. Y'all still make me excited about coming to the house of God and worshiping the Lord. There ain't been a time that since I've been pastoring here, there's not been a day that I can wake up and remember not wanting to go to church. Amen. Not wanting to get in the pulpit and preach to you the word of God. Oh, Gables Creek, I love you. Oh, Gables Creek, will you pray for revival? And Habakkuk took that little word, oh, and he, he put that in action before the Lord. And he said, oh, oh, Lord, I long for revival. I long for a move of God. And then he addresses the Lord. He says, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, twice in the scripture he says, Oh, Lord, because Habakkuk knew that the only source of revival that was going to come to the nation of Israel, the only source of revival that will come to you and I is if it's orchestrated and if it's authored by the Holy Spirit of God. No other way. No other way will revival ever, ever be accomplished at a Gabriel's Creek or any other church or any place in the community except it is authored by the Holy Spirit of God. And Habakkuk said, oh, Lord. He said, oh, Lord. And he's calling out to the author. He's calling out to the one that can send revival. And he said, I have heard thy speech. I was afraid, oh, Lord, revive thy work. Oh, Lord, revive thy work. This, Gabriel's Creek, how many of you believe this church is here by, because of a work of God? Stand up. Stand up if you believe that. If you believe that Gabriel's Creek is a work of God, amen. Oh, Lord, revive this work. Revive thy work. That's Habakkuk said, Lord, I know this is a work of you. I know that this is a work of God. Revive thy work. But friend, if I didn't think it's a work of God, I wouldn't be here this morning. But God help us that the work of God at Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church will be revived. Amen. And we'll see those glory days again. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. I'll get down. Revive. Oh, Lord, revive thy work. Thy work. This is a work of God. Did you know you're a work of God? I'm a work of God. Save for the grace of God, I'm a work of God. Oh, Lord, revive this. Revive this preacher. Let me pray like I always like wanted to pray. Let me study more of the word of God like I want to study the word of God. Let me see Jesus in, 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 in everything that I do. God, stir me. Oh, Lord, revive me. Revive this work. But it has to be in every individual. Do you know what? It's possible for me to have revival and nobody else have revival. Do you believe that? It's possible for me to have revival and nobody else have revival. So what you need to do is make up in your mind is this. I'm going to have revival if nobody else has revival. I'm going to have revival. I want it. I want it that bad that I, and hey, it'll run over on somebody else's shores as well. 
People will get to see them what you got, and what they, they'll get to want what you got, and they'll want that stir of God. They'll begin to pray, and they'll begin to seek God, and they'll say, oh, Lord, revive this work. Amen. God revived the work, and he says, in the midst of the years, revive thy work right now. Gabriel Creek's a lot of years old. There ain't nobody in here that came to the first Gabriel Creek Baptist Church service. Sister Liz looked at me and, oh, ma'am, I'm not accusing you of that. <laughs> but let me tell you something. This church was founded because someone had a burden in their heart for a church. Someone wanted a church in the community, and they began to pray and ask God to help them, and God give them direction, and God started to work here a bunch of years ago, and God started to work here, and God's going to finish the work here, and I believe, my friend, with all my heart that God wants to revive this work. In the midst of the years. In the midst of all these, right now, in the midst of these years, God wants to revive this work. I'll ask you, do you want God to revive this work in the midst of the years? <clears throat> Give me a minute. I told you I'd be, I'd be wore out before I got through. Revive thy work, it shows us the true nature of revival. It is a revival of the people of God. It is revival of those that love the Lord and desire revival. Now look, you can go out here and say, that preacher's crazy. That's all right, I probably am. You can go out here and say, that preacher's dreamy. Well, it's a pretty good dream, so leave me alone with it. You can go out here and say, well, preacher, there ain't never going to be revival, okay? Amen. Just don't stand in the way of it. When it happens, amen, if revival stirs, get out of the way. Amen. Get in or get out. Get out of the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm looking for a move of God like never before. I've got my eyes set on the Spirit of God. God sent revival in the midst of the years where you revived this world. The true nature of revival is God's people being restored back to that. Hey, every uh, John. John restores old cars. So does Joe and probably a half dozen others, and he restores old cars. I've seen people get old cars that, that you'd haul off for sale for scrap. They take that old car out, and they, they take it all apart, and then they clean it all up. And they sand it all down and take that motor out, take that motor apart, and they'll clean it all up and put it back together and try to find parts here, there, and yonder. And when they get through and it's all cleaned up and it's all painted back like new, you set it out there and it looks like a new car. You know what happened to that car? It got revived. But you know how it got revived? It got revived because John said, I want, I want to revive this old car. Let me tell you something, friend. We're a church in God in heaven that says, I want to revive that church. I want to take them apart. I want to put them back together. And I want to create in them a spirit of revival. And if they'll just look to me, I'll do that. And we'll have a brand new church. Amen. Hallelujah. How bad do you want it? Is it worth your time? Is it worth your effort? Now I'm through here in just a second. If God sends revival, it's not going to be contained in these four walls. If God sends a move of His Spirit, it's not going to be contained in these, these walls. I'm telling you, friend, news will get out. News will get out that revival has stirred. News will get out that the Spirit of God's been moving. And when the Spirit of God's moving, friend, God said, I will draw all men unto myself. If people get saved, it'll be because God draws them through His Spirit to come to know Him. He may draw them into the house of God to hear the Word of God that they can come down to this altar and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, if you're here saved by the grace of God, you're a candidate for revival. If you're here and you're lost without God, you're a candidate for salvation. 
You'll never experience revival until you've once been saved by God's grace. Oh, my friend, today, do you know the Lord? The most important question I will ever ask you, I don't, some of you I don't know, the most important question that I will ever ask you or that anyone else will ever ask you is do you know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? That has a yes or a no answer. But everybody in here has to answer that question. Do you know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If I didn't know my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'd come down to this altar and I'd say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God save me by your grace before I perish and go to hell for all eternity. Do you know the Lord? Have you been born again? Have you been birthed into the family of God? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you saved today by the wonderful grace of God? If not, the Bible says, Behold, today is the day of salvation. Right now, right this hour, today is the day of salvation. God's people, how desperately do you want revival? Is this something we've just been talking about for a few weeks and nobody's taken into consideration? How desperately do you want revival? How desperately do we need revival? Are we willing to to do what's necessary to have God move in our hearts and our lives? Are we willing to do what's necessary to have God move in the church? Are we willing to make the sacrifice of our time in prayer? Are we willing to make the sacrifice ourselves to the Lord uh, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God? How willing are you for revival? Everybody bow your head just a moment. No one looking around. I'm through. Well, there's someone here this morning say, Preacher, I'm lost without God. I've never been saved. And I fear going to hell without God except I be born again. Would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost without God. Anyone in the building, the Lord's dealing with your heart, and you're sitting there saying, No, I, I can't raise my hand. No, 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 tell us what people will think. I can't raise my hand. Listen. Nobody's looking but me, and I'm not going to call your name. If you're here and you don't know the Lord today, you've never been saved, and you're not sure where you're spending eternity, slip up your hand, and I'll pray for you.